Hi, I'm Jen Matar. I'm here to demonstrate a fall project for you from Design from Faber Castell Design Memory Craft. And um, unfortunately, I forgot the original at school at my work because I brought it in to show everybody how cute it was because somebody was asking me what I was doing and um, I left it there, forgot about it. So we're going to be surprised at the end. It's a really easy project and it's something that anyone can do um, with our with any of our products, um, especially the gelatos and any of the mediums. So we're going to use a few tonight um, and then we'll put it all together and you'll see what a cute little pumpkin it is. It's a little fabric pumpkin that we're going to make very uh, mixed media. We're going to use the um, steampunk colors. So these are the steampunk set of gelatos and th these are my favorite colors of all the gelatos. I think these are my favorites. Although there are some of, a few other individuals that I love. But these are my favorites. So that's what we're going to be working it with tonight. So you can always watch this again. Uh, hopefully everything will go well. It's been kind of a, a rough day so I'm hoping everything goes smoothly tonight. So I'm very glad you guys are with me. Uh, let's see. You, there's a prize. You can win a prize. Um, we have a nice prize pack of the steampunk gelato colors and gesso, the the design memory craft textural accents gesso and chalkboard chalkboard paint, which we're going to use a little bit of too. So those are the prize, and you can win if you after the. Ustream is over. You go to our website, um, our blog, and I think um, I think Tanya's going to put the link up. So she'll put it up a couple times throughout the the recording, so you can log in to our blog, go to our blog, and leave a comment. And when you leave a comment, um, you'll be registered to to be and you'll be entered to win the prize. So can't wait to see who does that. Yeah, I know. Thank you. Don't throw temper tantrums or throw up. <laughs> I've already had. You know, a kindergartner throw a temper tantrum and a and a second grader uh, throw up in my room. So yeah, but this is much more enjoyable than that. Although teaching kids is a lot of fun. It's just some days there's always issues. Okay, so I'm gonna pan down because I I'm looking a little, you know, tired. <laughs> but I'm not tired. I have had a lot of coffee and I'm ready to go. So we're going to pan down. I'm going to show you what I have on my table here. We've got a lot of things that we're going to be working with tonight. I've got the Stampers Big Brush Pens, which we're going to use with a couple stamps I just picked. You could use any stamps. These I just happen to have the, the wood-mounted stamps that I'm going to use for the project. And I have some um, stencils that I've picked for the backgrounds. I may not use all these. I'm, I just picked my favorite three that I wanted to try and then I've have the selection of gelato so here we have the steampunk set here this is cinnamon black cherry iced coffee and iced chai so the or chai yes yeah, chai and then we have banana which is from the um 50s diner set that I really like and mango mango is like an orangey lighter orangey color yellow orange color all right. I also have a little bit of um, leftover gelato mist that I made, which I'm not going to demo tonight because we've, we've done that before, and you can find the link on the blog for how to do that. Um, a foam applicator that I'm using. I'm just using one that I had laying around here. And you're going to need some needle, needle and thread um, for part of this project. And twine. You can use any twine. I just happen to have this thicker kind of jute twine that we're going to use and um, a hot glue gun which we'll be using and fabric okay so I'm using right now I'm using white denim that I happen to have a scrap of from another project and but you can use canvas duck cloth um, muslin cotton anything that you can color you know that you can color on and then sew and put together so I'm going to show you how, how we're doing that um, and you also need one more thing which is a cork or a stick or something for the stem of your pumpkin because we're going to be making a little pumpkin. So I just happen to have a cork from a bottle of wine that I, I save all my wine corks here. So I got a little container of them so I can use them. I think I'll use this one tonight. So 
we're going to do that. And then I have scraps from when I cut out the circle, which I'll show you in a minute, and I'm going to make some leaves out of those. So you could leave it uncut and then do everything and then cut out the leaves after with the circle or pre-cut the circle. It doesn't really matter. It's up to you. How I made the circle, you might have a fancy circle maker, but I don't. I just have a plate. So I'm using one of my plates. This one is a small, I don't know, I'm not sure what, maybe 8 inch plate. So this one's an 8 inch. The one I made before was a, was a bigger one, was a dinner plate. So this one is the bigger one. So you can use them any size, but I'm going to do the smaller one for the demo because it's quicker. Okay? So, um, yeah, all these names, I know they're so yummy. No, um, you're... You there's the the um, link is up. She just typed it, typed it out. So when you guys are done here, when I'm finished, you're going to um, go to the blog and comment, and you can win that fabulous prize with the mediums and the um, the steampunk colors. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Those are my favorite things. All right. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put that one aside. I'm going to start right on my canvas, or this is actually white denim, but we're going to not going to be technical here. You can use any fabric. And let me just move a few things out of the way so we have a little room here. Alrighty. The first thing I am going to do is stamp on here because um, I want to get the stamps on and then I'm going to add the colors. Okay, so that's what we're going to do first. And I'm not going to be too picky about it. I do want to um, warn you that if you're when you make this, you're going to be flipping it over and you're going to be sewing. We're going to do a little stitching on the edge and it'll all come together up like this, you know, like the pumpkin. So when you're stamping, if you have things that need to read the right side up, you want to stamp towards so that they're they'll be upright okay so you got to kind of imagine that it's going to curve up when it's all put together okay got that visual there got it all all right so when I stamp I'm going to be stamping kind of you know so that the text is towards the outside edge all right or the these will go and I'm not going to do a lot of this I'm just this is just random so sometimes it doesn't matter you could pick a stamp that it doesn't matter if it's top or bottom or whatever so that you're less picky about it um, I'm going to use the stampers big brush pen this is um, just black 199 black but you could do any colors you wanted and um, this is you could tell this is one of my favorite stamps I use this text a lot it's kind of a script kind of text and um, because I want this to be a, a decoration that I don't just use for Halloween that I have up for Thanksgiving or just the whole fall thing I'm not gonna really do it all Halloweeny but you could totally do it so that it was Halloween ish okay I don't know if you can see it I'll hold it up so you can see so I'm just stamping some randomly on here and um, when this dries um, this is the India ink stampers big brush pens and the pit artist pens are all India ink when it dries it will be permanent you know so that it won't run when the when we put the gelato on but I am going to blast it with the heat gun just to make sure because sometimes with the fabric um, it takes a little longer for the ink to to dry completely so that it is uh, permanent all right so this is really you know you're just doing what you like pick things that you like you could do pictures of something whoops Oops. see what I mean just a little crazy I think I've had way too much coffee today that might be a problem too much makes me drop things all right and then hmm I think I'll do some of these this is a brand new stamp I just got this I think it's a I don't know what kind of stamp it is not sure Janet Dunn design Hampton art this is a Hampton art one I don't know I just like the numbers and letters on it or numbers it's all numbers yeah you can tell I've had my brain used today you get the idea they're just funky kind of letterpress looking numbers and I really like that okay so uh, 
I'm gonna go like this. And you could totally do more than one color with these markers because um, these pens could blend and then they they give you a unique look that way too. Alright, we're getting there. I think I just want a little bit more on one side. Alright, so it's really not that important that I see you know it all clearly because I'm going to add color to this and then when I form the pumpkin it's going to be all kind of wavy anyway when it gets mushed together. But I just want a little bit of contrasting color and um, something that stands out a little bit. Alright, so heat gun it. I'm going to heat gun it just to make sure it's all dry and it won't run when I put the gelatos on. Does take a little longer for India ink to soak into the fabric and not run. <laughs> oh, Tanya, that's so not fair. While you're doing naming, you got to taste all the gelatos. You're so lucky. There's no such thing as too much coffee. Well, there is if you're a little jittery afterwards. I might have a little trouble falling asleep tonight. Alright, I think I'm pretty safe with that now. It's not running. Alright, I you can apply your gelatos right to the fabric. Um, right directly to it so um, I will do some of that but I'm also going to do some that are off on my craft mat so that it you don't get uh, a real thick application because some of these colors are a little darker and I'm, I might just want to drip them and splatter them on here so I'm going to do that separately so right now I'm just going to kind of get a little bit of color in here and I'm, I'm not going to be too picky it's just a kind of random thing sometimes I just want random. I want it to be kind of not evenly applied. So they kind of blend together and I might use some orange. And they're still pretty transparent even though I'm kind of applying it a little more heavily right directly to the fabric. But once I add water, it'll all kind of spread out. You might still see some of the texture um, with the, these colors. And some brown, some cinnamon, a little dash of cinnamon. I want it to be fall, so I'm picking fall colors, and I think that steampunk line is really perfect for fall. Um, it has a nice fall touch. I used it for some Halloween um, colors, too, because it's got that that intense purple, that black cherry is really intense, and then some of the darker colors, but it's metallic too, so it's really pretty. I'm going to try to move my camera a little closer to here. There we go. All right. And then I'm just going to take my water. I just have a mason jar here with water, and I'm going to start blending some of the colors together with water. Now this is going to make it pretty wet. So I may have to take a little time to dry it before I can stitch it all up or it's going to be very wet and then the hot glue won't stick to it. So just be patient with me. This process is pretty quick so you can make a lot of these, you know, all at once, let them dry and then, you know, stitch them all together the next day or, you know, later that day. You can make a whole table arrangement, which is what I'm going to be doing. These are so fun to make. And you could do it all different colors, patterns with the stamps. All right, you can see that the ink is not running. It's staying right where it is because I heat set it a little bit and made it more permanent. It's all dry now. All right. 
when one pumpkin isn't enough. Yes. You could use all the colors. Do different combinations. That would be amazing. You could have green mm. pumpkins and yellow pumpkins and orange pumpkins and rainbow mm. colored pumpkins. I don't know. It would be all crazy. My art club could even make these. They're, this is like really pretty easy project. All right, so I'm just kind of wetting it and getting a base color. So these are my base background colors. I'm going to add a little bit more to it after I dry it a little. I'm going to use the stencils. I'll show you some ways. I mean, you might have seen me do this before. The if I decide that I don't have enough color, I could go right in on the wet canvas and add a little bit more, and it really has that rich color. I think I need more orange. Mango. Mixed with the cinnamon is really pretty. All right, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to dry it. They blend really well on the, on the fabric. Um, you may, if you color directly on here, you may see some of it after you dry. You know, you can use your fingers to kind of blend them. You can use your brush. You don't have to use water. You could just blend it with, uh, with your fingers. There's different ways. I'm just trying to get a base cut color down here. So I'm just going to dry this. The rest of this is probably going to be more dry, dry application. Um, because what I'm using is a denim, it has little um, texture in it, little lines with valleys in it. So I did use water because I wanted it to get in inside those. If you don't, then it's just going to sit on top of the, the texture. So depending on what kind of fabric you're using, like a muslin will be more flat. It has a flatter weave, so you're not necessarily going to need to blend it with the water. You could just do it with your finger or a foam applicator. Pretty wet under there. You can see I got a really wet in the middle. Now, I'm, I don't need to make this completely dry. It's not necessary to do it complete, but um, just enough that it's not soggy because then the next step will be kind of, it won't be as crisp. Yeah, I love painting on fabric. I love using the gelatos on the fabric. They're so nice, so great for that. I've, I've, been, I've used them on fabric shoes. I've used them on fabric bags. So I'm kind of partial to the fabric application. Um, I think this circle is 8 inch. It's, it's the size of my small plate. So let me see. Yep, 8 inch. It's an 8 inch circle. But you could do it any size that you want. Um, you could even make little mini pumpkins if you did a, like a six inch circle or three, you know, four inch circle. And I just traced the plate. Alright, it's pretty good now. Alright, so I am going to decide which one I want to use. I think I want this fancy kind of, kind of uh, stencil. This is a Prima stencil. So what I'm going to do is start with um, one of my colors. I think I'm going to use the iced coffee because it's a little darker and it's metallic. And I'm just coloring on my craft mat. Just putting, up, putting down a little layer of it here. And then I'm going to take my foam applicator, which is just one I've had for a long time, and I just clean it with a baby wipe um, or water, soap and water. 
and I'm just picking up some of that iced coffee. And then all I'm going to do is take it over the stencil, holding it still, and rub it in a circle. And just pick it up as I need to. And I'm just going to do this a little bit. I'm not going to do it over the whole thing. I'm going to change direction. So see what that you can see. Ooh, it's like a pancake. There. All right, so that this is a dry application now with the foam applicator, just through a stencil. And it sits right on top of that. All right, let me try. I'm going to put a little more over here. Okay, so circle. I like these big foam applicators. They last a, a good long time and I can get a, a wider thing, but we have some foam applicators in our toolkits that are a little smaller and that, you know, that's going to give you more control over where you put um, the color. All right, so look at that. See, we're getting some pretty designs. All right. Oh, maybe a little more. This side looks neglected. I think we need some more. Over here. There we go. Just a little more where it was kind of empty. Pretty. All right, so that's pretty good. Um, I might do some mediums through here. I might, uh, hmm, maybe I will do some gesso. All right, and I'm going to use just a foam brush to do this. And I'm picking up a little of the gesso, and I'm just going to kind of pounce it on the circle template here. If you have a pouncer, which is like those, you know, brushes they used to use for stencils on walls and stuff, that would be even better. But right now, this works for me. Make sure you don't pick up a lot of gesso when you're doing this because it'll ooze in underneath the stencil. But I just want some circles on here. So right now I'm just pouncing some gesso and I kind of see how I, I picked up some of the gesso and I put it in the lid so I can just pick up the right amount instead of having a big blob of it on my foam applicator. So I'm kind of working outwards and I don't want to go over everything, just some of it. Yeah. You could color your gesso with your gelatos before you apply it. There we go. I think I need a little more over here. This is what I do when I create something. I talk to myself. Oh yeah, I think I need some of that over here. It's not quite enough. My husband has learned to ignore me. All right. Oh, let's watch that later. I don't know where I'm going to put it there. Um, I usually just wipe off my stencils with a baby wipe to get the gesso off, and then I go wash it good later. Just get it, most of it off of there. All right, I am going to do a little drippage here of the dark, or the, what was it? Black cherry. I always try to call it dark cherry. It's black cherry. Because um, I really like that purple, but it's kind of intense when it gets wet. I really love that, but I think I just want to drip it a little bit. So we are going to, again, 
I'm going to draw some on my craft mat. Oh, I'm going to dry this first. Let me dry some of the gesso. Oh yeah, the stipple brush works great for that pouncing. Um, the foam applicator would work great with that. And you can wash it. I like this gesso a lot because it dries really fast. Um, on fabric, it's going to stay a little wet, more wet. So I'm just kind of giving it some help. Okay. And I'm going to do my last bit of color on here. I'm just going to take this. Oh, such a pretty purple. I love that. A little more water and now I'm gonna just kind of drip it down adding more water as I need to ooh look at that too just around the edges well, maybe I'll just splatter too oh I like the splatter let's do that just tapping on my brush you could use the stipple brush too Just giving it a little funky color here. See if I can drip some more. There we go. Getting a little bit on there. Especially over the gesso, this looks really cool. All right, dry it, and then we're gonna be ready to stitch to do a little stitching. Now the chalkboard paint, you could use that through the stencil too, on here, and um, that would give you more black, some black dots. You could use your whipped spackle on here. And that would give you more texture. Okay. Um, before we move on, I am going to color some of my scraps so that I have my leaves ready to go when I'm ready to add them. So I'm gonna just do that real quick. These I'm not gonna be super detailed with. I'm just taking some scraps and adding some color to them. Got all these edgings. There we go. Uh, what do I do with my scissors? So I just want a couple leaves for the stem. So I'm just going to put this aside for a minute. And I'm just going to add some color. So uh, I'm going to use green tea and pistachio and margarita mix. And I just want color on here. So. I'm not even going to use water with these. I'm just going to use my finger to blend. All right. Oh, she's teasing us. I haven't even seen new colors. They got some plans up their sleeve. So 
So just adding some, this one is green tea. Just some leafy colors. Oh, I might even add some cinnamon because that would be pretty. Cinnamon. Kind of looks like camouflage. <laughs> so this is really not totally blended. I'm going to show you. I'll hold it up closer to the camera so you can really see the texture because when you don't blend with the water you're going to see the texture of the fabric more especially if it's rough like this one this is a a denim white denim okay so can you see it see how it's sitting on top and not going really inside the little grooves i've kind of smushed it with my fingers Oh, burlap leaves would be really pretty too. You could even color the burlap with the gelatos. So you can see right here the texture. All right, so those are good. And all I'm going to do is cut myself some leaf, leaf shapes. You could draw them out if you want to, but I don't. I don't want them to be perfect. They're just going to be funky football shaped leaves, sort of. I always tell my students they're kind of, the leaves are a little bit like football, football shapes. There we go. All right. So we have some leaves, a couple leaves that we'll add on there. Put those aside. All right. Let me clean up my mess here. Put some of these away. Because I got a lot of gelatos out on my table. All right, now we are going to put this all together and this takes just a little bit of time but you don't really need to be super fussy with this, okay? What I've done is I, I'm using like um, that cross stitch floss kind of uh, thread but you could use just regular sewing thread for like a sewing machine and you're going to start on the inside because you want your knot to be on the inside and you're going to go just to the edge okay I just get it started this way but then they don't have to be super close together I'm just stitching big stitches I know there's probably a name for this but I don't know what it is I'm not a sewer per se so I'm just kinda I don't know Basting? I don't know what that's called. Oh, yes. Oh, you could embroider them before you do this. That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, we want to see the finished product. Make sure you share with us. I want to see that. I have a machine that's pretty basic. It doesn't really embroider. It has some fancy stitches, but I don't know how to do that. But if you do, I want to see what you did. All right, see how I'm just doing this? Really, all I'm doing is going in and out, and I'm keeping my stitching kind of far apart. Like, I'm not doing really close, you know, close uh, straight stitching. It's just in and out. So I'm kind of bunching it up and going in and then pulling it through so I can gather them. And it's gathering. Does this make sense? I hope. I hope it makes sense. You're just kind of going from the front to the back. Is it basting? Oh, you're so good. I don't know. My grandmother was the one that always did all the sewing. She made me lots of dresses and stuff, but I, I was not very good at all that. Yes, share, 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 share. We'd love to see it. All right, so this doesn't, you can see, this is like an eight inch circle. It's really not taking me too long to do this. You could whip these out pretty fast. And you're just gathering it into a little bag. It's like a little circle bag.
And I'm going to, I'm just stuffing this with um, the fiber fill. It's kind of like a polyester, a poly something. Oh, no thimble. Oh, I've poked myself a number of times, let me tell you. I even sewed through my thumb on a sewing machine once. Not fun. So, yeah, I know, not, not a big sewer here. All right, but see how I just, all I'm doing is gathering it into a little bag here. Okay, don't pull it too tight yet, and I'm not even going to cut the string yet because I'm not done with it. I'm just going to fill this with the stuffing. So, you want, I'm just using the cheapest I could find. It's like 100% polyester fiber stuff. This stuff. Okay, and we're just going to stuff it into the pumpkin until it's full, and you have a good shape here. Kind of keep pulling it to see if it's what you want. Yeah, ouch. <laughs> I know I prefer hand sewing. I mean, for this kind of thing. And I did make some aprons this uh, summer for my classroom for me with different fabrics that go along with different artists and things that I'm teaching. But um, yeah, but I really, they were really easy. It was like sewing for dummies kind of pattern. Really easy. It's so easy or something like that. All right, so I'm filling it in and making sure it's not too squishy. All right, so this is kind of the idea. This one's a little one. Okay, so to end it, I just kind of gather and I'm just going to go kind of across here somewhere. And just kind of tie it off. Add it to keep it closed. I'm sure there's a prettier way to do this, but I'm not going to be overly worried about it. All right, and I'm going to end up hot gluing the middle with the the um, cork, so it really isn't too big a deal. Now, um, I like the little divisions in pumpkins, you know, like the little separations, the little, I don't know what you call them, divots. So I'm going to use this to kind of get some more shape for my pumpkin. And I'm going to just tie it real tight in a knot. And then kind of wrap it to give the sections of the of the pumpkin. Tight, tighter. So I'm kind of sectioning it out like fractions. And this is where if you if you didn't stuff it enough, it's kind of going to be a problem for you because it won't give you the nice puffy sections. So I kind of try to overstuff a little bit. The bigger ones are a little more. You could even put something in the middle that would weigh it down a little bit, but also um, give it a little more shape. So can you see like the bottom um, crossing over to make these sections, these puffy? It's a little trickier with the, the littler pumpkins. The bigger ones you can really see. Okay. And then I'm just tying them in the middle every time. So I left a little tail there to so I could tie it a little easier. Okay, now I'm not going to snip it um, super close because I want to wrap it around the bottom of the stem too. So leave yourself like a tail, a long tail. So I'm leaving some here. I can always cut more off, but... I'm leaving this much for the, the middle, okay? So now I've got it kind of, you know, got it all gathered. You can see, can you see the sections kind of puffing out here? All right, so now we're going to do the cork. Now, if you have a cork or you have a, a stick that's not so pretty, you might want to paint it. 
you know, you can paint it with the chalkboard paint. Um, and you can hide pretty much any problems with the cork and the leaves. So I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to hot glue it here. And then I'm going to wrap this around the base of the, of the cork. Okay? Can you see? It's kind of not wanting to do this. All right, so I've got my hot glue gun all, all in place, and I'm going to use some hot glue here. Be careful not to cut your, or to burn yourself. I've done that many times too. That hurts. Yeah. And I'm going to put the wider end in the middle. Okay, and while it's wet, I'm going to start wrapping this. And you can add a little more hot glue as you go. So kind of hold it down. So I need to add a little more hot glue. Or you could use craft glue for this part too after the hot glue kind of takes. Oh, cinnamon sticks would be cute. Any kind of sticks. Oh, yeah, but this one. <laughs> yeah, the blue, I've seen those velvet ones. They are so pretty. But this one, you could make your own artwork and then make it into a pumpkin. And I'm going to do a whole bunch of these with different, you know, kinds of colors and stuff. So I'm just adding a little more hot glue to fasten the rest of this. All right, so... I'm just wrapping it around. And that'll cover the hot glue and any uh, boo boos you made when you were stitching. It's sticking to my fingers. And then you can trim off the extra if you don't want to go all the way up the, the stem. And then I'm just going to add my leaves on here. I could I could do ribbon. I could do a little piece of ribbon on here. I know. Look at I'm like whoosh, picking up all the stuff. So I could add um, my leaves and maybe I could do flower if I want. So I could hot glue these leaves on here. Maybe put a pretty ribbon on there. But let me get the hot glue, let me get the leaves on here and then I'll show you up close what this looks like. My other one was way cuter, but this one is pretty cute. It's a little bitty one. My other one was bigger. You could do wired, um, you know, wired leaves. You don't have to make your own. You could, you know, you could use Prima leaves or whatever. Let's see, I'll put another leaf right here. I'm going to tuck this one so it's kind of wrinkly. <coughs> oh! <laughs> My husband sees him. This hot glue is really hot. I can't hold on. All right, so there's our little oh, pumpkin. Let me get it. There's the leaves. I probably could have made them a little smaller for this size pumpkin. They're a little big. You could even put some wire with the little curly things on them. Oh, I might do that. That's a really cute idea. But let me give you the side. See the little pumpkin stem? Yeah, that's a good idea. Add some weight to it. This one's little, so I don't really need to add weight, but the bigger one, I kind of put um, some beans, or you could put rice, or you could put uh, little filler beads. Yep. Oh, potpourri would give it some scent. You guys have some great ideas on here. Yes, I'll put the bigger one on the blog when I get, get it from school tomorrow, because <laughs> I forgot it. And it had, I used the same, oh, actually I think I used a little more of the steampunk colors and less yellow on it. But same kind of 
design, just bigger. All right, so that's the project. Let me lift you up here so you can see me. There it is, my little pumpkin. And I imagine like a whole table of these and they could be decorated. You could put little little ribbon on them. You could use the little ones for place settings. You put someone's name on the leaf and then have them to take home for Thanksgiving or for any of the fall holidays. Cute, right? So stinking cute. But I like the little cork because my husband sells wine. That's what he does. And so I have a bunch of these. But a stick would be pretty too. It would be very rustic and fun. All right. I hope you enjoyed our project tonight. And um, I will post the bigger one on our on our blog. Um, I'll do a little blog post of that. And on the Facebook page. And, um, and I hope you enjoyed that. So don't forget. You could get, win a prize. Don't forget. You could win the... the um, steampunk set, the gesso, and, and the chalkboard paint, but you have to go to our blog and make a comment right now for tonight. Um, so those of you that are watching after tonight, you're going to already be a little too late to, to do that. So that all my all my lovely followers here that are watching me, make sure you go right over to where Tanya posted the um, link right there, and you go right there and you make a little comment, Okay. And good luck to you all. I hope you. I hope I can't wait to see who won, who wins. And forgive me for my rambling tonight. I'm just very tired and had too much coffee. So, um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the record now. Hopefully, it recorded and everything's good. All right. Have a good night. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again in the next UStream. stream.